What's up guys, Krista Simmons here. And as many of you know, I'm a dyed in the wool coffee drinker. I am obsessed with caffeine, but I've gotta be honest with you. I've traveled the world and I've lived in Australia, Southeast Asia and Spain. And the way the world drinks coffee is Nescafe. You see it all over the place on every single table, especially on farms and in rural areas where I spend a lot of my travels. So I'm here with the brand to explore Colombia and how this coffee is made. Our journey started out just a quick flight from the vibrant, creative capital city of Bogota in a region called Quindío. Quindío's coffee growing region is actually considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its significance in the global coffee growing landscape. We're in Colombia's coffee belt. This is the third largest producer of coffee in the entire world. It's here where we'll get to see the process of making coffee from seed to cup. First, the baby seedlings are sprouted at a nursery. Those green beans that we actually roast later on are in fact the seed for a new plant. Once the seedlings have grown to be strong enough, they're then transplanted into individual pots where they continue to gain strength before their next step. Oh. Oh. The journey to the farm, or as they call it in Colombia, la finca. The coffee plants are then transplanted onto the fincas, where it grows from a small plant to a sizable tree. The fruit then goes from green to ripe red, which is actually why they call it a coffee cherry. Posteriormente se convierte en fruto. Ah, okay, so the flowers un... sort of pollinate and become the fruit that. So that's the coffee cherry that we all know. And then eventually you open up the coffee cherry yes. and there's the beans. Unlike some coffee growing countries, Colombia picks all of its coffee by hand. Machines aren't even allowed here. This reminds me a lot of some of the best wineries. Not only is coffee grown on stunning, sloping hillsides like wine country, but hand harvesting means a more precise picking process and, of course, a better flavor. It's amazing to know that every single bean in your morning cup has touched a human hand. Como pueden ver, estos son granos totalmente maduros para poder tener una buena taza de café. Once the cascara, or outside of the coffee cherry, is removed, then you're left with that green bean we talked about earlier. It's then fermented, dried, usually on rooftops, and shipped off to the mill. At the mill, you'll get a real sense of the scale and scope of the operation. From there, the coffee is bagged, sorted, and shipped off for roasting. It takes a lot to fuel our morning addiction. The way roasters pick their profile is through a process called cupping, which we got a chance to do at the FNC, or the governing body for Colombian coffee. It smells like midterms. <laughs> I feel like a baseball player spitting out my chewing tobacco. <laughs> There's no way to do this in any sort of glamorous way. This grating, blending, and roasting is what makes each coffee unique. In the case of Nescafe, the coffee is then brewed and freeze-dried, making it soluble. I always kind of thought it was like space food, but in fact, it's just freeze-dried, brewed coffee that you then rehydrate and is ready to drink. After seeing this all firsthand, I have a new appreciation for my morning cup. Honestly, it was really cool to meet the Colombian people sharing their passion for coffee and their country with the rest of the world.